Question number three says a certain steel railroad rail is 13 yards in length and weighs 56.3 pounds per yard. How much thermal energy is required to increase the length of such a rail by 3 millimeters? Note, assume the steel has the same specific heat as iron. Okay, so this is saying that we have, uh, we have this railroad rail right here and it's 13 yards long and uh, it wants to increase the length, it wants to add a change of length to add three millimeters onto the end and and how much how much energy of heat, so how much energy and heat is needed to add three millimeters onto the end. And so if you look down at the at the bottom of my blog, if you're watching this on my blog, then down at the bottom there should be a table of specific heat. If you're watching this on YouTube, then uh, you should be able to click in the um, click in the in the in the section right below here, and you can go to the blog and look at the table of specific heats. Because the question is asking how much how much energy is needed uh, to to change the temperature or how much energy is needed to to elongate this thing. So we can use our our definition of Q which is the mass times the specific heat times the change of temperature. Well, it, we know what the mass is and we know what the specific heat is, but what's the change in temperature? Well, it's the change in temperature needed to make this thing larger. So we're using a thermal expansion equation. So in thermal expansion, the, the change in length is equal to the coefficient of thermal expansion times the initial length times the change in temperature. And so we know what the we know what the initial length is. We if you go um, uh, to a previous blog post, I have the coefficients of thermal expansion listed, and we know it wants a change in in length of three millimeters. So it starts off thirteen yards, and the the coefficient of thermal expansion for steel is eleven times ten to the negative sixth. And it's actually, you could put 1.1 times 10 to the negative fifth works just as well. But for some reason, they're always expressed in terms of 10 to the negative sixth, I guess, to make it easier to see all of them as uh, which one is larger and which one is smaller. Because all almost all of these expansions are listed as 10 to the negative sixth. And so that is equal to alpha. Well, really, we're not even interested in alpha per se. We're interested in the change of temperature because with this equation, we have everything except the change in temperature, and so we can solve for the change in temperature and plug it in up here so that we can solve for Q. So we have two unknown variables up here. We have Q and change of temperature, but if we can, if we can solve for the change of temperature, then we can solve for Q up there. And so the change of temperature, the change of temperature is going to be is going to be equal to the change in length divided by the coefficient of thermal expansion times the initial temperature. And so here we have solved for the change of temperature and we can substitute this into this equation. And it's because this equation gives us the exact temperature we need to stretch this thing by three millimeters to make this thing expand by three millimeters uh, so we we can plug that temperature in there and so we'll get an equation of Q equals mass times specific heat times the change of L over this, uh, the thermal expansion coefficient times the initial length and this is everything you need to solve the problem. Here's this was the easy part though. The the tricky part is in converting units because um everything is uh it's it's absolutely ridiculous. So let's list what we know. We know that the initial length is 13 yards, but we need that in meters. We know that the the um coefficient of thermal expansion is 11 times 10 to the negative 6. The the specific heat uh, is equal to 448, and that's in that's joules per kilogram 
Celsius. And, and I'm, I'm letting you know that because that lets you know we need the units all in joules, kilograms, and Celsius whenever we, we start this. And on up here, alpha is in um, degrees Celsius to the negative 1, and so we need, of course, degrees Celsius again. Now the, the change in length is equal to 3 millimeters, and I'll go ahead and convert that, is uh, 0 0.003 meters. And then for the math, uh, the mass, I'm sorry, the mass, it doesn't tell us the mass, it tells us um, how much it weighs per yard. And so this, I'm calling this a pseudo density, it's actually a, a perturbation of density, and I'll, I'll give you that word, perturbation of density. You can look that up. It's a it's a cool word, um, but the, so density we would say that density is equal to the mass over the volume. Here we have something that is the mass over the length, and because the the width and the depth are considered to be constant, it it cancels this out to simplify the volume. So it's a perturbation of of density. Uh, so the mass times the length. Well, we have the initial length. And so, and it's actually not even mass, it's weight, but we're going to call it mass just, just to simplify even further. So uh, the, the mass is 56.3 pounds per yard times 13 yards. So that actually gives us um, 731.9 pounds. So our, our mass is 700 and 31.9 pounds. So you can see off the bat that we had we have to convert the mass, we have to convert the length, we had to convert the change of length, but it was very simple, it's straightforward. The other two are not so straightforward. So in order to convert the, the length, we'll start out with, we'll say 13 yards over one. We'll multiply that by three feet per one yard, and we'll multiply that by by one meter per three point two eight zero eight four feet and that will give us units of meters so the feet will cancel out the yards will cancel out and we'll get thirteen times three thirteen times three over three point two eight zero eight four that's zero eight four and and we'll have it in units of meters and so the that's actually 11.8871962 meters and then for pounds you have 731.99 pounds over 1 and we're going to multiply that by 1 kilogram over 2.20462 pounds and so that's going to give you uh, approximately 331.9847 kilograms. And so if we come back and we, we plug these in, so we said that it's 11.887, we'll just stop at 7 meters, and the mass is going to be um, 331.9847 kilograms and now we can plug everything into into our equation up here and we can find Q the energy needed so you take 331.9847 for mass multiply that by the specific heat 448 and that's in units of joules kilograms Celsius and then you multiply that by the 11.8 887, uh, well, actually, you multiply that by the change, which is uh, 0. Point, uh, we said it was 0. 0.3, and I, I don't know what happened to my change of L. We said it's 0. 0.003 meters. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll, you'll multiply the mass times the specific heat, 331 times, times 448, and multiply that by the change of heat over the thermal expansion coefficient times the initial length. And so if you plug all of that in correctly, you should get a, a final answer of, of Q equals um, 
3,412,282.92. The units on that are joules.